things just like shut up. Hey fam, what's up? It's April from Aprilius Maximus here and today I'm here to do my April book haul and page havoc unboxing. Anyway, I am pre-filming the book haul portion of this and once I get my page habit box I will put a clip at the end of this video so you can check that out. But let's just get started with the books. So I went way over my budget this month for buying books because I was super stressed and that's just like one of my coping mechanisms. But anyway, like usual, we're going to go in category. So first I have audiobooks, then I have books that I was sent by publishers or subscription boxes, then I have pre-2018 releases that I bought myself and then I have 2018 releases that I bought myself. So let's get cracking. So I had a couple of audible credits to use so I decided to get A Court of Wings and Ruin for my reread before A Court of Frost and Starlight came out. I just really enjoy the audiobooks and it really helped me with my reread because I was running kind of short on time. So yes, I got Aka War and I also got Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo which I am planning on reading in the month of May. Alright, moving on to publishers and subscription boxes I was sent Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman by Walker Books and this actually doesn't come out in Australia until the 3rd of June I want to say the 3rd or the 6th or the 1st one of those. <laughs> this is the sequel to Scythe and these books are so popular on the booktubes right now so I'm really keen to get to these. And I mentioned this book in my last book haul but because it actually came out in April I thought I should probably mention it and that is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli and this was sent to me by Penguin Random House Australia and I read it and I loved it and you can find out my thoughts in my April wrap up. <laughs> Okay, I have two books from subscription boxes. So I have the March Page Habit Young Adult book and I have a special discount code that you can use for Page Habit so I will leave it in the description for you. But the YA March book was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo and this follows a main character who is originally from the Dominican Republic and she is now living in America and she wants to join a slam poetry club at school. This is entirely told in verse. And the really cool thing about Page Habit is that the book is annotated by the author, which is awesome. And then we have the April Owlcrate book. Again, I have a special code you can use. I'll leave it in the description for you. But the April book was Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie with this special Owlcrate exclusive cover. And this is kind of like a Vegas inspired fantasy. Don't know much about it, but people are loving it. Okay, so I have 11 pre-18 releases that I purchased myself this month. So let's just get into those. So first we have this new vintage classics edition of Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. I just really really love this cover and I didn't have a physical copy of this book and it's one that I actually started reading but I still need to finish but I just ran out of time. But I'm really excited to get to this. It is about Agnes who is a governess and it's her struggles with difficult children and family issues and fun stuff. Next we have the TV tie-in edition of Voyager by Diana Gabaldone. This is the third book in the Outlander series. I love Outlander. I know it has its issues. Like, don't get me wrong, it has problems. But I still really, really enjoy it. I love the history. And I wanted to collect these editions because they just have such beautiful faces. I mean, look at them. They're beautiful people. I have already read this book. I read it mm, maybe two years ago now. I am currently on the fifth book in the series and have been for a very long time. Hopefully we'll remedy that this year. If you haven't seen the TV show, highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. I know it's on Netflix in Australia. I recommend starting watching the TV show before you start reading the series because I started reading the series before watching the show and I was like, this is so boring. But once you watch the show, you're like, oh my God, I'm obsessed. And then it makes you want to read it. Next is The Nowhere Girls by Amy Reed, and I mainly bought this because one of my really good bookish friends gave it five stars and I really trust her reviews. This essentially follows three teenage girls. All I know is that there is a sexual assault thing that happens and I think these three girls sort of come together to try and get justice. Apparently it is amazing, it has been getting excellent reviews, so I really wanted to check it out. Next we have quite a large stack of Shannon Hale books. So we have Book of a Thousand Days and this is all about a girl who refuses to marry a man so she gets locked away in a tower for seven years with her lady's maid just for refusing to marry a man. And so this is told in a diary format of the lady's maid of their thousand days in imprisonment. This actually has gorgeous illustrations throughout it and I've just heard amazing things about Shannon Hale and her books so I kind of went on a Shannon Hale frenzy 
and here we are. So I also bought the entire Books of Bayern series. This is a companion series all taking place in the land of Bayern. So the first one is The Goose Girl. I'm pretty sure the main character can talk to animals, which is my dream, so yes. The second book is Anna Burning. Third book is River Secrets, and the last book is Forestborn. I'm really looking forward to getting to these. I plan to read all of them in June when I have time. Next is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher, possibly. And this is the first book in a trilogy and it is like a new adult fantasy. This has an unbelievably high rating on Goodreads and I just honestly I just wanted to check it out. There's no other reason. I'm trash. Next we have The Guernsey Literary and Potato Pill Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaffer and Annie Barrows. And I bought this after seeing the movie trailer in the cinemas and I was like, oh my gosh, that's a book. That looks amazing. Um, it basically is an epistolary novel. It is told entirely in letters. It's all about this woman discovering this secret book club that was taking place during World War II. And it takes place on an island in the British Channel. And my ancestors are from those islands. So that's really cool. This was first published in 2008, but it just, it seems like a book that's right up my alley. I'm really excited to check this one out. Then we have a book that I'm currently reading, and that is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, another book where I saw the movie trailer and had to go out and buy the book. By the time I'm filming this, I'm filming this like two weeks before I'm uploading it, so I will probably be done with this by the time you're watching this video, but I'm currently a third of the way through and I'm loving it. It's hilarious. It's basically about this woman who lives in New York who's been dating this guy for two years, and and he invites her to his home in Singapore to meet his family and it turns out that he is from an insanely rich family in Singapore and basically every woman in Singapore wants to marry him and she's like what? It's gonna be an amazing film. I just know it and this book is so much fun. Okay, the last pre-2018 release that I got is The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill, which is probably my new favorite graphic novel. I'm obsessed with it. It centers around this young girl who discovers a lost tea dragon and she returns this tea dragon to the owner who is a part of the Tea Dragon Society. And these tea dragons actually grow tea leaves. So the Tea Dragon Society like take care of the tea dragons and harvest their tea leaves. And the tea leaves, tea leaves have magical properties. So she's learning all about the Tea Dragon Society and she meets this girl who has run away from home and they sort of form a possible romantic relationship. And it is honestly just the most precious book. The art style is so pretty and it's a really diverse book. It also features a character who uses a wheelchair and it's it's just a precious look at the bond between humans and animals and people and it's just oh it's so good you guys. Okay moving on to the final portion of this video which is the 2018 releases that I got and uh, there's a lot. There are 12 of them? <laughs> How did that happen? So I tried to organize them according to release date. There might be some a little out of order, but just bear with me. So the first one is Why is a Nerve Volume 2 by Marissa Meyer, and the art is by Stephen Gilpin. And this is a graphic novel duology that takes place after the Lunar Chronicles, which is one of my favorite series. I have yet to read the second volume, but I read the first volume last year and I loved it. So yes, I had to get the second one. Then we have The Fandom by Anna Day, which centers around these fangirls who go to a convention and they find themselves transported to the world of their fandom series. It just sounded awesome. Another one that I haven't yet read, but I plan to, and it just sounded really cool. Next we have Bygone Badass Broads by Mackenzie Lee and illustrated by Petra Erickson. And this is essentially just a collection of 52 badass women throughout history who have kind of been forgotten by the world. And I read this one in April and I really, really loved it. I definitely highly recommend it. It's kind of similar to Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, but I highly recommend both. They're both great. Next we have White Knight by Ellie Marnie, which is an Australian author, and this is like a small town cult mystery thriller, I want to say. Again, a bookish friend whose reviews I trust loves this author, so I really wanted to give it a go. Then we have If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson. Now, this was actually published 20 years ago, but this is a 20th anniversary edition that was released this year, and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous little book about a Jewish girl and an African-American boy who form a romance at their prep school in New York and just the obstacles that they face. This is a beautiful book. You should read it. It's a, a 
feelings. Next we have another book that struck me right in the feelings box and that is Tyler Johnson Was Here by J. Coles, another book that I read in April. This is all about Marvin whose twin brother Tyler goes missing after a big party and police come and raid the party. So him, his family and his friends are trying to find his twin when a video is released that reveals that Tyler was killed and shot by a police officer. It is absolutely heartbreaking absolutely relevant right now and just an absolutely needed book for Americans right now. You can just feel the passion behind J. Cole's words. It's it's definitely a book that blew me away. The audiobook is incredible. I highly recommend it. This book is just all around amazing and really really heartbreaking. Next we have Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. This is a book I have not read yet but I really want to. This is about two people who form a like kind of texting based relationship and they sort of start spilling all of their personal secrets to each other and becoming really really close through text and they are in college and that's all I really know but I've heard it's amazing. <laughs> Look I just <laughs> discover kind of made me buy it, okay? I'm not gonna deny it. Next we have I Have Lost My Way by Gail Foreman. This centers around three people who have kind of lost their way and are trying to get back to who they used to be. It takes place after a fateful accident brings the characters together and their secrets start to unravel and they begin to understand that the way out of their own loss might just lie in helping others out of theirs. Sounds pretty good. Gail Foreman is kind of a hit and miss author for me so I'm curious to see whether this book will be a hit or a miss. Then we have Fury Bond by Claire Legrand. I am so unbelievably excited about this book. It is a fantasy and it takes place in two different time periods following two different queens a thousand years apart. Somehow these queens' destiny is linked and I don't really know much else about it. I don't really want to know much else about it. I just want to read it and devour it and love it. Ah, unfortunately you guys know um, while you're actually watching this video I am on my placement for university so I have no time to read and it's killing me because I really want to read all these books but I can't. The next book I want to talk about is The Librarian by Sally Vickers. This is just a book that I saw in the bookstore, knew nothing about, and just had to pick it up. This takes place in the 1950s and it follows a children's librarian, which is like my dream. If you didn't know, I'm studying to be a teacher right now, but after I want to do my master's to become a teacher librarian. So this is like right up my alley. And she falls in love with an older married man though, which is kind of not up my alley. But yeah, it's just kind of... Um, how her life changes and shenanigans ensue and it just looked really good. It's blurbed by Philip Pullman, interestingly. I don't know, I thought that might be interesting to you. But yeah, I just, I am really excited to read this book. It just seems really cool. Next we have The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I am so excited about this book. I'm excited about all these books but like, you know. This takes place, I think, either in the 1920s or the 1940s. I'm not sure. But it takes place at this huge ball. And at this ball, a young woman is murdered. And one of the guests at the ball wakes up every day for the next seven days. The same day repeats itself. And every day he wakes up in a different guest's body. And he has to try and figure out who done did it. It's just such a unique premise. It's been getting incredible reviews. I haven't heard anything negative about this and it just seems like a really really cool concept. And it's a really beautiful hardcover as well. It has the map of the hotel where the ball is and where everyone's staying and it just really really piqued my interest. So I'm gonna read it sometime soon when I am not um dead from stress. <laughs> okay and then the last book I want to talk about is Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian and this is a YA fantasy. It follows a princess whose country was invaded and she spent the last 10 years as a prisoner in her own palace. She is a really clever and cunning main character and she sort of uses her mind instead of physical force to sort of work her way out of this situation. It just sounds really really cool, love the cover, really intrigued by it. So that's the almost 30 books that I got in April. <laughs> My book haul in May will be significantly smaller because this is a little out of control 
But anyway, this is my hobby, this is my life, this is what I choose to spend my money on, so be it. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books down in the comments, and I am going to chuck it over to future April for the page habit portion of this video. Hello, it is April from the future. I am here with my, uh, 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 what month is it? I am here with my April YA page habit unboxing so like i said before i have a discount code for page habit that you can use i will leave in the description and you get free shipping if you're in the us or five dollars off if you're an international person like myself let's just open the box oh i can already see some exciting things okay first things first we have a letter from the author which i'm not gonna show because it spoils the whole box okay as per usual we have a page habit bookmark and it has a bookish quote on the other side. It says, To learn to read is to light a fire. Every syllable that is spelled out is a spark. That's by Victor Hugo. Oh, coyote. And then we have these two poems by someone called Lily Bollinger. That's really cool. I'll just read one of them out. Uh, this one's called Ghosts. When I was a little girl, I feared something dead stood in the dark and watched me with invisible eyes. I feared I'd ask a question and the light would flicker in response. When I was a little girl, I was afraid of ghosts. Now, I fear the darkness is empty. I fear I'll beg to feel your presence, and I won't feel a thing. I am afraid there is no such thing as ghosts. Okay, so for the month of April 2018, Paige Habit partnered with Books for Africa to donate books to Burundi. Burundi is the third poorest country in the world, but nevertheless a very beautiful country. It is shaped like a heart located in the heart of Africa. So if you didn't know this about Page Habit, Page Habit donates a portion of the proceeds on your behalf to help people in need. And it has facts about Burundi, like the school participation rates and stuff. And I just think that Page Habit is amazing for doing this. And I, it just makes me so happy that they do this. So the next thing I'm pulling out of the box is a book lamp. Oh, it's magnetic. Whoa, it's super bright. In my opinion, you can never have too many of these because you gotta protect your eyeballs, people, when you're reading books. Don't read in the dark, okay? Anyway. Oh my god. Next, we have a pencil. And on top of the pencil is an adorable thing. On top of the pencil is this cat eraser. And it's so cute. Cats are my favorite animals, so... This makes me very happy. I kind of want to keep the box on because it looks like the cat's hiding in the box and that's kind of what cats do. Adorbs. Okay, the next thing I see is really, 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 really exciting because it's a pair of socks and I love socks and winter is coming up here in Australia. So this is perfect. And they have books written all over them. Then we have a little advertisement. So Page Habit is actually looking for original content to publish in their book boxes. So... If you have any writing that you do and you want to submit it to Page Habit, you can visit www.pagehabit.com forward slash submit. I am not a writer at all, so sorry Page Habit. Okay, I'm going to show these last because they link to the book, so it would kind of spoil it. But we've actually reached the book anyway, and it's a book I'm so excited about, and that is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. So like usual, Page Habit has annotations from the author throughout the book. I'm so excited about this. This follows our main character who was born two days before the dead began to walk the battlefields of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So it takes place, I think, during the Civil War and the dead rise again and become zombies and become a zombie army, which is super fun. And in this new America, a new law called the Negro and Native Reeducation Act requires certain children to attend combat schools to learn to put down the dead. So basically white people are deciding that Native American and African American people should fight for them. Wow, white people being shit. What's new? Anyway, this sounds amazing. And this, it feels so nice. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just uh, so pretty. And to go along with Dread Nation, we have these character cards, which are super, super cool. Woo! The armies of the dead have risen, and so will we. So that is it for this book haul. Thank you so much to Paige Habit for sending me this box. And thank you so much to you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye!